In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said a great amen. Amen. Ali Moshoy, amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your people. Thank you, Lord, for our brothers and sisters, our leaders, our workers, and everybody here. And all the people who are sharing with us and hearing this. Lord, we pray you impact every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Open our eyes of understanding. Deepen our experiences in the Lord in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, as you deepen that experience in us to reach out to other people and pass on this Christian experience in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. It says, Therefore, as you come to chapter 2 of Hebrews, and then you start with that word, Therefore, it's referring actually to chapter 1. It said, because of the things we've read in chapter 1, the things we've learned in chapter 1, the things we've seen in chapter 1, therefore, what's that therefore? It's talking about, look at chapter 1, verse 2. It says, he has in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Because of the exaltation of the son, and because of the sacrifice of the son and because of what the son has done the only begotten son of god because of what he has done therefore we ought to give the more honesty to the things we're hearing he's telling us in chapter 1 verse 3 it says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholding all things by the power by the word of his power when he has by himself purged our sins it says because he has purged our sins because he has shed his blood the blood that cleanses and washes us whiter than snow because that blood has been shed therefore we ought to give the more honesty to the things that we have heard it's telling us in chapter 1 verse 4 it says be made so much better higher greater than the angels it says put all the angels together what they cannot do what they could not do they couldn't do this in the past they cannot do this in the present they will not be able to do this in the future what christ has done because christ has been made much greater much higher much better than all the angels together because of this greatness of christ because of what he has done he says therefore we ought to give the more honesty he says as we look at what surrounds our salvation you look at what surrounds our savior you look at the exaltation of our savior and you look at the greatness of the very son of god he says therefore we ought to give the more honesty to the things which we have heard it's telling us that when you look at christ you look at his position look at you look at his power and you look at his propitiation that is the atonement he has made for us and you look at what christ has done it says you have to intelligently follow what christ has done and therefore give number one give heed that means pay attention to what christ has done pay attention to what christ has said not only that you give heed you give earnest heed that is the attention is something that is focused you're giving attention and you're giving an earnest heed and it says the more earnest heed more earnest heed to the things that we have had so that we'll not let them sleep let them pass away just like that you see there are people they hear the word of god the word of salvation they hear the word of god the word of his sacrifice they hear the word of god the word of his substitution and they hear all that and they allow that to sleep away from them then he tells us in verse 3 it says for if the word spoken by angels remember now remember now is comparing and contrasting christ with the angels is not that in chapter one it says 
the word spoken by angels all the people that disobey that they transgress against that there was a great recompense a great punishment and it was a great trust of god upon them because of their disobedience then he says how then do you think those who reject the lord and those who neglect the lord that's why it says in verse 3 after look at verse 2 again for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and then it says and every transgression and disobedience received uh, he, he received uh, a just recompense of it what now he comes to the conclusion he says how shall we escape it's okay about we even we the apostles even we the leaders even we the workers even we who are hearers of the word even we the members and even we humanity how shall we escape if we neglect that word neglect it means that you know there are people they hear the word of god it's not that they're not hearing the word they ignore the word they hear it they neglect it they ignore it not only that they hear it and they disregard it as if they have not heard as if nobody said anything as if the word of salvation has not been made very clear they neglect it that means they overlook it overlook it they're interested in other things they're interested in other messages they're interested in other challenges but they neglect and they overlook the word therefore they skip it they skip it that is you know we've had that before overlook that one skip that one give me another thing skip that forget that overlook that how shall we escape if we neglect how shall we escape if we disregard how shall we escape if we ignore how shall we escape if we miss we miss the word of salvation we can tell all the stories of the bible parables of the bible we can tell all the miracles of the bible the proverbs of the bible we can tell about all the principles we can have interpretations of the bible but this one we miss this one we miss this one it's telling us how shall we escape if we miss this great salvation if we replace the word that is salvation we've had that before tell us another thing we've had that before show us another thing our ears need to be tingled our ears need to you know just hear something new we've heard about that salvation before but are we saved we've heard about that salvation before but are they saved we've heard about that salvation before is every member of my family saved and then we replace the word with other things things that are interesting things that are sensational and things that are exciting things that are entertaining it says how shall we escape if we replace this word we're hearing if we despise if we say I'm above that. I've gone beyond that. I had that before. I preached that to other people before. So when they talk about salvation, I know that already telling me another sin. And we despise that. How shall we escape? If the people who neglect will not escape, how about the people that reject outright? They hear it and they say, I will not accept that. I will not believe that. I'm going to go on in my religion. Religion is enough for me. How shall we escape? If we reject so great salvation, what does that mean? How shall we escape? How shall we escape judgment? Because it says in verse 2, those who neglected the word spoken by angels, they are the recompense, they are the judgment. And now he says, how shall we escape judgment if we neglect? How shall we escape eternal punishment if we reject, if we overlook, if we toss aside, if we despise this word of salvation? How shall we escape condemnation? Condemnation. The people that had the words of angels they were condemned and they were judged when they did not receive that word and it says how shall we escape this eternal punishment eternal lake of fire if we neglect overlook and disregard this word look at that verse 3 again it says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation you know you could have said how shall we escape if we neglect salvation it says i'm talking about something more serious how shall we escape if we neglect 
great salvation, this great salvation, then he, he uses the word soul. He enlarges it. He deepens it. He heightens it. He says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? And now he's telling us about something about this salvation. You know, there are people that think that salvation is a new generational doctrine. They think that salvation is a doctrine of some evangelicals that just rose up a few years ago because they say we've been going to church and we've been going through all the rituals and all the ceremonies and we never heard about this salvation until these younger people and new generation people until they rose up and they're talking about salvation salvation look at this in verse 3 it says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation look at this now which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord. He's saying that this is not something peculiar to us in deeper life. This is not something belonging to us that started the church, the ministry, just less than 50 years ago. He said this dates back to the Lord Jesus Christ himself, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord himself. How did he get to us? Look at verse 3. And it was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. There were eyewitnesses. Those people themselves, they had the Lord. And those people got saved. And after getting saved, they said, this is something to pass on. This is something to tell others. There's no other message because if we know everything else, let's say, for example, it were possible for us to know the Bible from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation. Let's say it were possible to memorize the whole of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. If we don't have salvation, all that knowledge will be a waste. It will be worse than a waste. It will land us in hellfire. That knowledge is not enough. How shall we escape if we know? neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord himself and has now been confirmed unto us by them, by those apostles and preachers that heard him speak. Tonight we're looking at this message, necessary response to the great salvation. Necessary response. That is, we need to respond to this. We need to examine this. We need to find out about this. Am I saved? Thank God if I'm saved. Am I telling other people how to be saved? Am I telling them that this is the solitary thing? This is the indispensable thing. This is the important thing. This is something they must not miss. How will they escape? If they neglect this great salvation, which at the force was spoken by the Lord and has been confirmed unto us, necessary response to the great salvation. The three things we're going to look at number one the great salvation preached by Christ. The great salvation preached by Christ. And we need to find out because it says at the force, from the very beginning, he was the one that preached the salvation, the great salvation preached by Christ. Number two, the gracious salvation purchased by Christ. Already we have seen in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 that he purged our sins. That he is, he shed his blood. The price of this salvation, that's why it's so great. The price of this salvation is the blood of Jesus Christ. The gracious salvation purchased by Christ. Number three, the glorious salvation possessed by Christians. The glorious salvation purchased, sorry, possessed by Christians. Number one. Number one is the great salvation. The great salvation preached by Christ. And look at this again. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest seed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let it, let them sleep. 
very easy for you to be to slip away from our hands slip away from my memory slip away from my heart slip away from my attention slip away from the ministry that although ministry still carries on but we allow it to sleep and then we forget that the essential the important thing is this so great salvation that was preached by the lord himself and then he tells us there's a consequence if we let it sleep and there is a result of this if we let it sleep if we don't hold it firm if we don't experience it if we don't pass it on it says as a consequence for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression without exception every transgression every disobedience received it, it just recompense of reward how shall we escape if we neglect if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him the question is when did christ preach salvation how did jesus preach salvation what were the elements in the salvation that Jesus preached? We need to know that because, you see, if you don't understand that, how Jesus preached salvation, when he preached salvation, to whom he preached salvation, and the content of the message of his salvation that he gave to the people. Anybody can just mention the word salvation. Anybody can just say, you know, do this and you get saved. And we're asking ourselves, as we compare that message that we're giving out with the message of Jesus Christ, are they the same? Is this the same great salvation? Or that one is, this one is wishy-washy salvation. Or this one is make-believe salvation. Or this one is superficial salvation. Or this one is a new generational a kind of salvation. Or this one is a worthless, empty salvation. The salvation preached by Christ. How did he preach it? What did he say? What did he emphasize in that salvation that he had and then you need to compare your own salvation with the salvation that jesus preached and that this is what jesus said about salvation and then you compare the experience you have and say praise the lord i have the salvation with jesus himself which he preached we're looking at mark chapter one mark chapter one i'm reading from verses 14 and 15 mark chapter one verses 14 and 15 now after the after the john was put in prison jesus came into galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of god that's it now which at the first jesus began to preach what did he preach look at verse 15 and saying the time is fulfilled the kingdom of god is satired repent ye and believe the gospel you see that repent ye and believe the gospel the salvation jesus preached at the element of repentance it's not just you know come as you are it's not just you know anybody who comes no matter who you are whether you repent or not christ is going to receive the salvation jesus preached at the first at the beginning he tells us here repent ye and believe the gospel we're looking at luke chapter 13 luke chapter 13 i'm reading here from verse 3 luke chapter 13 we're looking at verse 3 the salvation jesus proclaimed the, the salvation jesus preached in luke chapter 13 verse 3 it says i tell you name but except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish you see that important element in the salvation that jesus preached when it says this great salvation so great salvation the one preached by christ he said except she repent ye shall all likewise perish look at verse 5 it said i tell you nay but except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish 
you can see then that repentance is an integral part of the salvation that Jesus preached in that same age, chapter, th chapter 13. Look at verse 23, verse 23, and you see that here we're talking about salvation. It says, Then said one unto, unto the Lord, and there few that be saved. And somebody asked the Lord when he had about repentance. Not many people have repented, Lord. Not many people have turned away from their sins. Are you telling us then that only few shall be saved? And the few that be saved, look at verse 24. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able many i say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able the salvation jesus preached was not a cheap salvation it was not a make-believe salvation it was not a head knowledge salvation it was not as easy as raise up your hand don't do any other just raise up your hand if you raise up your hand you are in already it says try to enter in at the straight gate because wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to perdition destruction but few are the people that see the way of life and the narrow way and they are the people that get to that salvation and they get that eternal life and we're looking at luke chapter 15 in luke chapter 15 the great salvation preached by christ luke chapter 15 i'm looking at verse 3 it says and he, and he, and he speak this parable unto them saying which man of you what man of you having a hundred sheep if he lose one of them does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it what's her salvation there they are lost and then Christ goes after them, he discovers them, he recovers them, he pulls them out of the way where they were lost, and he brings them home into the kingdom. That's the salvation he preached. And then he says in verse 5, and when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, and re rejoicing. And then he says, and when? He comes home, he calls together his friends and the neighbors, saying unto, unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Look at verse 7 and look at the conclusion. Look at the salvation here. The salvation Jesus preached. I say unto you that likewise um, joy, uh, that uh, likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that tell me repented that is salvation over one sinner that repented then it says more than over 99 just persons which has no need of repentance which uh, needs uh, no repentance and so you find the element of the salvation that jesus we were looking at chapter 18 luke chapter 18 and i'm reading from verse 9 luke chapter 18 we're looking at verse 9 luke chapter 18 verse 9 and you speak this parable unto certain that trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others the salvation that jesus preached is not self-righteousness it's not trusting in themselves in their own power in their own strength by their own ability by their religious observances they can be righteous by themselves it says he spoke this parable unto them two men went up into the temple to pray and the one a pharisee and the other a publican and the pharisees church and prayed thus with himself god I thank thee that I am not as other men are extortioners, unjust, and then adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week and I give the tithes of all that I possess. Look at verse 13. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up as it were as much as his eyes unto heaven. But he smote upon his breast, saying, God, 
be merciful unto me a sinner confession of sin be merciful unto me a sinner conviction of sin be merciful unto me despising himself for his sin i tell you this man the publican who repented this man the publican who was convicted of sin this man the one that confessed and he said i need mercy this man went down to his house justified the salvation justified he confessed the sin he accepted the sin he was convicted of the sin and he knew that this will bring me to eternal condemnation and he turned away from that jesus said that's the salvation and then he says uh, rather than the other man that he is uh, rather than the publican for everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted we're looking at Luke chapter 19 Luke chapter 19 I'm reading from verse 8 the salvation preached by Christ proclaimed by Christ emphasized by Christ and then we need to compare this salvation with our own personal understanding personal knowledge personal experience of that salvation and we need to compare this also with the salvation we're reaching out to people we are showing people that salvation that salvation you've got it you've got it does it have repentance does it have hatred for sin and does it have the conviction of sin and coming out of sin and embracing the savior abiding with the savior luke chapter 19 verse 8 and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the lord behold lord the half of my goods i give to the poor and if i have taken anything from any man by false accusation i restore him fourfold and then in verse 19 and jesus said unto him this day is salvation come to this house for as much as he also is a son of abraham for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost Zacchaeus was lost while he was uh, playing his uh, dubious game Zacchaeus was lost while he was oppressing people extorting people Zacchaeus was lost while he was cheating other people and taking what belongs to them unlawfully Zacchaeus was lost when he was doing all those oppressive things but now when he came in repentance when he came regretting for his past life and he said you know Lord if I knew this I wouldn't have done that half of my goods now i give to the poor and if i've taken anything by wrong accusation from any man i'm going to restore that to him and jesus said that's repentance and jesus said that's coming out of darkness coming to the light that's coming out of those who are lost and now you have found this day is salvation entered into this house for as much as he also is a son of abraham because this is what i came to do to seek and to save that which was lost we're looking at john chapter 3 john chapter 3 we're looking at uh, verse 14 in john chapter 3 verse 14 here is jesus still telling us about another element of this salvation it says and as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life understand you must not uh, forget you know all the other things jesus has said about uh, repentance repent ye therefore and believe the gospel you must not forget except she repent shall all likewise perish you must not forget strive to enter in at the gate the small gate because uh, you know if you don't enter now at the time of opportunity the time will come you'll want to enter you'll not be able to remember that there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repented after that repentance now the second part repent ye and believe the gospel here is a believing side that you believe that jesus christ is the only savior that the repentance itself by itself alone without believing on the lord jesus christ you cannot be saved that is there are two sides of the coin on one side of the coin is repentance and the other side of the coin is believing on the lord jesus christ and when those two sides come together the result is salvation that's why it says in verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever 
believers in him shall not perish but have tell me everlasting life what salvation everlasting life what salvation eternal life and who can give that eternal life only the lord jesus christ for god sent in verse 17 god sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved and we're looking at john chapter 8 john chapter 8 and we're reading here from verse uh, reading from verse 24 john chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 24 in verse 24 it says and uh, i said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins for if ye believe not that i am he ye shall die in your sins you see that element in salvation if you do not believe that jesus is the only way that i am he i am the messiah i am he the final sacrifice i am he the one sent by the father and there's no salvation in any other name if you don't believe that if you think well i'm going to believe in jesus christ but I know there are other ways too. I know I think there are other personalities. I think there are other prophets too. It says if that's where you are, you'll die in your sin. If you're going to be saved, number one, you repent. Number two, you believe. What are you believing? You believe on the Son of God as the only one appointed, approved, and given by the Father to give us that salvation. It says if you don't believe that you will die in your sins it's telling us then that believing on the lord jesus christ is an essential element an important part of this salvation we're looking at verse 30 chapter 8 i'm reading here from verse 30 as he speak these words many believed on him then said jesus to those jews which believed on him if he continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed think about that if you continue in my word then are you my disciples indeed how are we saved we're saved number one there's conviction of sin and that conviction leads us to repentance how we save number two there's a confession of our sin with the mind of repenting and turning away from them lord i'll not go back to that again how we saved there is conversion conversion we believe on the lord jesus christ and then because of that faith with the repentance we are saved there's a conversion and then how do we get saved there's continuation what if i said i repented keep on talking what if i said i believe keep on talking what if i said jesus is my only savior keep on talking what if i stop there uh -uh. jesus said if you continue you're convicted of sin you confess that sin you're converted from your way of sinning and then you make up your mind that's my savior i'm saved he has found me he took me out of the wilderness i will not be lost again if you go back to the drunkenness if you go back uh, uh, that means you're not saved that means you're not saved if you go back to the darkness to idol worship that means you're not saved if you go back you say i confess i had conviction after that i got converted keep on talking keep on talking you must continue if you continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed those are the people that are saved those are the people the people who have turned away from their sins they believe on the lord jesus christ and they keep on believing that's why you'll find he that believeth 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 that believeth means there's a continuity i keep on believing i keep on believing i keep on believing on the lord jesus christ and the grace that came at salvation continues in sustaining you in that way of the lord and that's the thing the lord has sent us out now to go and preach look at uh, look at and um, uh, Luke chapter 10 Luke chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 20 Luke chapter 10 and we're reading here from verse 20 it says uh, now it says uh, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but re rather rejoice because tell me your names are reaching in heaven 
your that that salvation is recognized in heaven and then heaven sees that and it's this is what jesus said this is salvation jesus preached it's not just you know salvation salvation many people talk about salvation the salvation so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken of by the lord jesus christ and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him what are the elements of that salvation number one repentance turning away from all known sin turning away from all known sin and not not that somebody is forcing you and pushing you and threatening you from your heart you decide to repent and turn away from sin and then number two believing on him as the only savior as the only savior because if you do not believe that this is he and that he is the only one you'll be lost forever but not not only that conversion transformation and uh, change of life that's what jesus said in matthew chapter 18 he said except she be converted and become as little children ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven the salvation of jesus christ is conversion is transformation except that conversion takes place salvation has not taken place in the message of jesus not only that it's a decision to continue in obedience to his word we are the, the decision to continue in obedience to his word and you know the, what that woman was taking this is john chapter 8 in the very act of sinning and then the pharisees said the law of moses says you stone her and what do you say and then he said he that has no sin let him cast the first stone and they all went away and then jesus saw her and said woman what are those your accusers has no man condemned you he said no man lord look at this neither do i condemn you at the past to forgive you because i see you are sorrowful for your sin i see you are repenting i see your sin if i get out of this i'll never go back to, to that thing again okay i forgive you neither do i condemn you but tell me the rest go and see no more that's salvation that's salvation go and see no more it is accepting the command of christ to go and see no more what's the immediate result what's the immediate result in the salvation that jesus christ proclaimed the one that he preached was the immediate result the immediate result is the name is written in heaven the name of that convert a true convert a real child of god the name of that one who was repented that name is written in heaven and there is joy before the angels of god because a soul has truly really come in was a sure evidence because we can't see what's written in the book of life i can't go there and say i see your name i see that name what's the sure evidence the sure evidence is that now i can see he's walking in the narrow way that leads to heaven the way of the cross that leads home is forsaking the way of the world never to walk in it never more but the way that leads to life eternal the narrow i can see that i can see that and i can i can and a discern and decipher that i can see that that person is no more in the broad way but is in the narrow way that leads to heaven that is sure evidence here on earth point number two now is a gracious salvation purchased by christ the gracious salvation purchased by christ you remember hebrews chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 1 hebrews chapter 2 and we're looking at it from verse 1 it's telling us that uh, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time you see that less at any time less any year less at any period deeper life less at any time you know 40 years have come and gone less at this time now we just uh, you know drift into salvation salvation everybody's salvation raise up your hand over there at 
it doesn't matter what you've done it doesn't matter where you're coming from you don't need to do any other thing just raise up your hand there yes the heaven is looking at you now and everybody that raises up their hands no matter what you even go to do after this time now just raise up your hand that's salvation that's salvation that's salvation how many of you one two three one thousand people praise the lord everybody put your hands together because one thousand people got saved today we let it sleep the words of jesus what he said what he preached what he proclaimed we need to keep to that word lest at any time we should let it sleep for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense of reward how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them which heard him he went to the cross to purchase that salvation and it is the great salvation why is it great because nothing less than the blood of jesus the eternal son of god could have provided it that's why it is great why is it great because uh, it is so great because it will take us from earth to heaven see how far heaven is from earth earth is from heaven and the salvation is so great it is the only thing that will pull you out of this life and take you to heaven why is it so great this salvation is so great it will make you to have eternal unending life with the almighty god it will reconcile the sinner with the holy god and it is the only bridge that can connect the sinner with the tribe's holy god it is the only thing god will look at he'll not look at sacrifice he'll not look at money he'll not look at your greatness he'll not look at your position he'll not look at anything you have the only thing he will look at the blood of jesus the sacrifice of jesus and take you from earth to heaven and snatch you away from the hands of satan and take you to paradise that's why it's so great that's why it says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation purchased by the blood of the lamb the price is great therefore the commodity is great the, the the sacrifice is great therefore the salvation is great purchased by the blood of jesus christ ephesians chapter one i'm reading here from verse seven ephesians chapter one and we're reading from verse seven in verse seven of ephesians is what it says chapter one verse seven in whom we have redemption in whom we have at the present tense in whom we have redemption through his blood the remission the, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace according to the riches of his grace that's why it's a gracious salvation and a great salvation look at verse 13 in verse 13 in whom ye also trusted after that ye have heard the word of truth and the gospel of your salvation you have heard the word of truth and the gospel of your salvation look at uh, verse 14 which is the earnest the deposit of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory it says it's a purchased possession you couldn't have had it without somebody paying for it although you don't pay anything but christ paid it all he paid the price and that's a great price that he paid for us that's why it's such a great salvation look at ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 5 even when we were dead in a sins and as quick he has quickened us together with christ by grace are you saved by grace are you saved gracious salvation gracious salvation that he purchased with the symbol of verse 8 for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is a gift of god it is a gift of god a gift you don't earn a gift you don't pay for because somebody else paid for it and he paid the greatest price that could ever be paid no man has ever paid such a price that's why it's a great salvation a great price a great salvation a gracious salvation 
gracious to you because you didn't pay anything isn't that what the angel said matthew chapter 1 matthew chapter 1 we're looking from verse 21 in matthew chapter 1 verse 21 it says and, and she shall bring forth his son and thou shalt call his name jesus for he only he it doesn't say it as if it's religion religion is an it religion has no life ceremony that's an it that one doesn't have life and you know the works of your hand giving money to the beggar and turning over a new leaf that's an itch that one doesn't have life but he for he shall save he shall save there's no salvation in any other could your tears forever full could your could your zeal no respite no all that for sin cannot atone he and he alone christ must save the angel said for he shall save his people from their sins you need to clinch to him you need to bend to him and you need to bow to him. you need to hold on to him and embrace him because if you lose him or if you you slip away from his son salvation is gone because only he you now shall call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sins acts of the apostles i'm looking at chapter 4 acts of the apostles chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 12 acts of the apostles chapter 4 and we're reading from verse uh, we're reading from verse 12 here it tells us neither is their salvation in any other neither is their salvation in any other hey you know there's no argument here there's no argument here you know somebody says but i believe in a, you know so and so there's no salvation in any other you see if i told you that i know a particular college a particular university the course you are looking for you want to go and do uh, at that old university say, they don't offer that course there then if you're traveling they don't offer the course there. there's only one college only one university that offers the course you are looking for and it is this and there's no argument you might uh, say well i don't accept that and go to the other place you're not going to get that course in that other place it's the same with salvation i'm saying the word of god is saying the angel said heaven said almighty god said salvation is only in this one the only begotten son of the father and there's no salvation in any other if you try any other way you're wasting your time and if you do that until you die you'll be lost forever because neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven none other name under heaven in any country in any continent all the countries they are under heaven all the generations from the time or from that time until now they are under heaven there is no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved if you are asking for salvation the salvation that takes us to heaven it is the one purchased by the lord jesus christ the one he gave us on the cross of calvary and he'll say i look to that cross i look to that christ i look to calvary and i know that he is the one that can save me that's when you have the gracious salvation purchased by the lord jesus christ and as the word of salvation comes to you you embrace that you accept that and you hold on to that you say i'll not let it go every other thing can go because those things don't give salvation but jesus christ my savior my lord my redeemer the one that died for me and shared his blood i'll not let him go and he will not let you go that's where salvation comes and that's how you retain that salvation acts of the apostles chapter 13 acts of the apostles chapter 13 i'm reading here from verse 26 acts of the apostles chapter 13 verse 26 six men and brethren children of the stock of abraham and whosoever among you fearest god to you is the word of this salvation saint to you is the word of this salvation saint Paul the apostle came to talk to the people uh, they had asked him they said men and brethren if you have anything to say say on and then he came and he read the old testament to them and from that old testament he said can i tell you this that everything we have read here is pointing to that cross is pointing to that christ is pointing to that messiah and to you now is the word of this salvation 
this great salvation to you is this word said and it's only those who receive that are going to have that salvation look at uh, verse uh, look at verse 46 we're looking at that same acts of the apostles chapter 13 and uh, we're looking at uh, let, let's go to verse 28 in verse 28 it says uh, and uh, it says and though they found uh, no cause of death in him you know he's talking about christ they found no cause of death in him yet yet desired the pilot that he should be slain that he is he was killed look at verse 30 but god raised him from the dead that's the word of salvation he died he died for you he was buried and then he rose again he says that's the word of salvation and it is coming unto you and thank god we have received it and we're not going to let it go from us in jesus name we're looking at verse 46 then paul and barnabas uh, a wax the bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken unto you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. And those Jews they judge themselves unworthy of eternal life. Religion was enough for them. And the rituals, those things were not for them. The old covenant that been abolished, the old covenant that has been forgotten, all that was enough for them. You know what that means? Now we were spending a particular currency in our country. And that uh, currency was called pounds. And it was Nigerian pounds. And eventually a new dispensation came, a new government came and they changed everything and now we're spending naira and somebody says i'm of the old school i'm of the old thought i'm of the old dispensation this uh, naira is uh, so light i don't want that i still have the pounds and i'm proud of the pounds that dispensation is gone that era is gone the pounds was valuable at that time when it was being spent, but that now it's been abolished, it's annulled, it's taken out of the way. It's the naira that will not be accepted. And if you take, uh, you know, the old pan, if you take it to the bank, now it's not accepted. It's not going, nobody is going to take that away from you. What I'm saying is the old covenant of uh, rituals, of animal sacrifice, of the altar, of the priesthood, of the Levites, and of the everything of the old covenant is gone at the time in the old testament when the lord instituted it it was acceptable but now a new dispensation has come and jesus has behold the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world and if anybody can go back to the old testament and still be reading that all that is to show us where we are coming from so as to tell you where we are today that christ is now the giver of salvation of eternal life if you go to the Old Testament and then you're still burning incense and then you go to the altar and you keep animal and you say it's the word of God. It's God that established that. It's God that gave us that. And those people were saved at that time. If they were saved at that time, why cannot I be saved today? Because that's old dispensation. Because God has now totally abolished that. Because the pounds that were spent in Nigeria in the 40s and in the 50s and in the, you know, before we got to 1960 all that will not be accepted any enough anywhere from any market now you cannot buy anything with that old pound but you bring the new one in the new dispensation and you bring the blood of jesus christ a new and living way that god has made that the blood of jesus christ i cannot come boldly to the throne of grace that's what's acceptable now and so all those old things are forgotten and torn away but jesus christ has given us this way of salvation thank god i got it i said thank god i got it and hey you're not you're not in the old covenant old covenant is the word of god is the word of, it was the word of god at that time it was the way of salvation at that time but now all that is forgotten and we have the way of christ that is now leading us unto this uh, salvation the great salvation that 
God himself that he has provided. And I'm looking at Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. And I'm reading here from verse 11. Titus chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 11. It's talking about this salvation, this gracious salvation. It's talking about this salvation, this salvation purchased by the Lord Jesus Christ. Titus chapter 2. And we're reading here from verse uh, from verse 11. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. That salvation has now come. We have received that salvation. Now verse 13, looking for that blessed hope. The people that are going to be in verse 13 must go through verse 11. You cannot count 3 before you count 1. You cannot count 13 before you count 11. You must have this salvation, this gracious salvation purchased by the Lord Jesus Christ and it teaches you. It transforms your life. It changes your life. You now live godly and you live soberly and you live righteously in this present world. Now you are looking for the hope, blessed hope and the glorious appearance hearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem all from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Point number three. The glorious salvation possessed by Christians. The glorious salvation possessed by Christian. And this salvation we're talking about is not hanging on the cross of Calvary. It's coming from the heart of Jesus Christ and it's coming to our hearts. The eternal life we're talking about is not just somewhere, somewhere there in the sky and floating up somewhere there between heaven and earth. It is coming to our lives. It gives us eternal life. It gives us everlasting life. It gives us this great salvation and it gives us this glorious salvation now we possess it and, and that's the thing is say don't leave it in the book don't leave it uh, you know in the literature don't leave it in the tape let it come out of the book and out of the bible let it come into your heart because it says therefore we ought to give the more honesty to the things which you have heard lest that any time we should let them sleep away from us for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward how shall we escape if we neglect if we leave the salvation in the book if we leave that salvation in the bible if we leave that salvation as a doctrine and it doesn't come into our personal experience how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which had the force began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him the glorious salvation and this is salvation the apostles spoke about they were not ashamed of that salvation because it is the power of God able to turn our lives around, able to change our lives and able to grant us the hope of heaven. In Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 16 Romans chapter 1 verse 16 it says for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Underline that word power. is the power of God unto salvation. If power comes to our lives for so salvation, then we'll be able to do what we are not able to do before. If power comes for so salvation, we'll be able to reject what we desired before. We'll be able to overcome the sins that, you know, we were committing before because now power has come with that gospel. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Everyone everyone that believes that power works in us what's he saying he's saying you know you cannot say that you know i've got the salvation but only i lack the power anywhere the power of the fire is there'll be heat 
anywhere the power of the fire is there will be some light and it's saying that when the power of the gospel comes to you it's going to do something to everyone everyone that believeth the Jew for us and also to the Gentiles for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from heaven it says uh, uh, from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith and when we have uh, this you know something happens and i pray that we'll see the reality in every one of our lives in jesus name in romans chapter 10 romans chapter 10 i'm reading here from verse 8 salvation romans chapter 10 we're reading from verse 8 but what says each the word is nice thee even though even in thy mouth and in thine heart that he is the word of faith which will preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness when we believe it leads us to righteousness that's the glory of salvation that's the glory of that salvation it leads us to righteousness for what the heart man believeth unto righteousness and what the mouth confession is made unto salvation the glorious salvation is a life-changing salvation and it's a heart a transforming experience it is not head knowledge only and it is not just mental accent and it is not just a self-righteousness this great salvation is the assurance of forgiveness of sins this great salvation is freedom from the guilt and condemnation of the past this great salvation is peace with god and it is love for god and it's a decision the light in obey obedience to the lord this great salvation is hatred for sin hatred for the old life and joy of living the new life in christ and uh, that, that's why it tells us in uh, acts of the apostles chapter 2 acts of the apostles chapter 2 reading here from verse 37 acts of the apostles chapter 2 verse 37 now when they had this they were preached in their heart and they said unto peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do men and brethren what shall we do anything to be done that uh, now that we have heard about a guilt about a condemnation because we were part of the people that crucified the lord then peter answered in verse 38 and said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission for the removal for the forgiveness of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the holy ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call and uh, with many other words with many other words with many other descriptive and practical and pinching pungent words he did testify and exhort saying save yourselves rescue yourself save yourselves from this unto what generation then they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls and they continued steadfastly you see that those people were saved that's salvation they were convicted of their sins they cried out what shall we do they confessed their sins we know we're sinners we know we're responsible what shall we do then they were converted they were changed and then they were baptized in water and now there's continuity and it says and they continued steadfastly Firstly, in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as tell me should be saved that's salvation that's salvation turn away from sin they are the gracious salvation we're looking at first uh, thessalonians chapter one 
First Thessalonians chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 5. First Thessalonians chapter 1, reading from verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. Not in word only, but also in power. The power that convicts. Not in word only, but in power. The power that leads them, pushes them, compels them to confess. Not in word only, but also in power. The power that led them, drove them to conversion. Not in word only, but in power. The power that made them to stay and to remain with Christ. In spite of persecution and opposition. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. And in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. As ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes. And ye became followers of us, the salvation. And ye became followers of us. They continued, they continued, not just that they raised up their hands. That's just part of the process. Repentance and believing of the Lord Jesus Christ and continuing with the Lord of the people of God. And it says, and ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, uh, with, with joy and uh, you were know, the joy of the Holy Ghost so that you are examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia for from we sounded out the word of the Lord not only in Macedonia and Achaia but also in every place your face to God word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we add unto you how ye turned to god from idols to serve the living and true god that's salvation how ye turned to god from idols and now you're serving you know, the living and the true god and now you are waiting now to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come i pray that this same salvation will be registered in every heart registered in every life and then we will know praise the lord i got saved and praise the lord i continue with the lord and then the people in the house fellowship and the people in your community and the people we're giving tracts to and the people were influencing and we're touching their lives and the people were influencing to come and to repent of their sins and to believe on the lord jesus christ there will be people that have been convicted of their sins there will be people that confess their sins there will be people that hate their the sins of the past they build a clinch unto the lord jesus christ and they continue with the lord jesus christ except that takes place then we know that you know it's just religion we're looking at a uh, first timothy chapter one first timothy chapter one i'm reading here from verse 12 first timothy chapter one and here we're reading from verse 12 in verse 12 it says and i thank christ jesus our lord who uh, who enabled me for that he put me he counted me faithful uh, putting me into the ministry who was before who was before not now who was before i don't continue in that the things i used to do i do them no more the places i used to go i go there no more the things i used to wear i wear them no more the friends i used to have i have them no more the things i used to drink i drink them no more because something happened to me i'm born again born again and born anew and christ has come into my life and therefore the life we're talking about is a life of the past is totally cancelled and washed away and it's no more there that's why he says in verse 13 was before a blasphemer a persecutor and injurious but i obtained mercy because i did it ignorantly in unbelief and the grace the grace the grace of our lord was exceeding upon with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus 
this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. He's saying that of the people who are saved, that this one is saved, that this one is saved, that this one is saved. I'm the chief because I sinned more than they did, not that I continue to sin. How be it in verse 16, how be it for this cause, for this reason, I obtained mercy that in me first jesus christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern he says what happened to me is for an example what happened to me is for a model he says it's for a pattern look at what i was and look at what i am today the things i used to oppose i now support the people i used to persecute i now participate in fellowship with them things are totally different from with me now he says i'm for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life and i pray that this same salvation will be visible in every one of our lives in jesus name and as we go to tell other people and instruct other people we don't want to just uh, you know be in a hurry that i yeah, just want people to come it's not that they enter into your own register that one is not important any name can enter into your register any name can be filled on your own paper the people that enter in the name their names in the book of life the people that heaven will rejoice about not me rejoicing not you rejoice yes we can rejoice if the joy of those people is limited to i'm happy look at the people that came forward look at the people that raised up their hands if the joy ends there that's nothing but if heaven can rejoice about them that their repentance is genuine if angels can rejoice about them that they were truly saved and truly born again and their names are in the book of life if jesus can rejoice about them i died for them i gave my life to them for them and now they're truly repentant and they believe on me and i know they are saved that continue in my word if jesus can rejoice over those people and if the angels can rejoice over those people if we can see their name in the book of life and if they continue if they continue if they continue in life in eternal life for the lord that's the real joy that's why the lord is telling us that therefore therefore we ought to give the more honesty to the things we've heard now lest at any time we should let them sleep for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every word and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him i pray that this word of salvation will ever be in our mouth in our heart in our ministry and the real salvation not make believe not counterfeit not fake and the real salvation will be preached unto the people that christ has purchased it and they'll possess it in jesus name and the people who are really saved they'll come into the fold and then they live the life of christ and will have the joy of teaching them and training them so that they can make progress in the things of the lord will rise up and pray that god will help us to be faithful to the word of his salvation faithful to this word will not modify anything will not change anything we're not looking for counterfeit converts we're looking for real real converts make sure you possess it yourself and then you're willing to go and preach it so that other people too can possess open your mouth and pray